Welcome. How's your Tuesday night going? I'm Chris Lato. Welcome to Lato Files. I'm a retired F-16 pilot. Now I live in Portugal and I make YouTube videos and fell into the UAP rabbit hole. So been investigating UAPs for the last uh, almost two years now. And recently in this past weekend, we've had four now shoot downs in the US. The last three have been unidentified. So it's been very interesting to hear all the calm and we've gotten a lot of information. It's been over the US and all of the recordings have been picked up. So if you actually transmit open source, so if you're just transmitting while you're training or in this case, um, doing this operation, then what will happen is anyone can pick it up, right? If you tune to that frequency. So we get a lot more information on these two engagements. My guess is they'll change after this. I bet we won't be able to hear so much. But uh, yeah, let's make sure everything seems to be working fine. So uh, after this, actually, I have a live with Martin Willis. So this will only be uh, 30 minutes. I have to leave at 50 minutes past the hour. But again, to go there to talk about the balloon shoot down, this has just been huge demand. And I just released uh, this video, my initial impressions on it, which didn't include the audio that I'm about to play uh, here. So first, let's just look through. This is basically the most recent information I could get. Uh, it was just hours after airspace over Lake Michigan was closed, Madison-based military jets flown by Minnesota-based pilots shot down an object over Lake Huron, officials said Sunday. This is from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. It's the third object shot down in as many days following incidents in Alaska and Canada, and the fourth since the downing of a Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina, February 4th. I love we just call it a spy balloon. You know, for sure it's a spy balloon. And if, you know, if it was, it's not that smart because we'll get all of their equipment, you know? Like I said in that video, I just uh, published a video. Um, the actual U.S., we had our own spy balloons that went over Russia and China back in the 50s, but it was kind of a terrible operation. I think we sent 541 over there and only recovered like 10%. And the Russians actually used some of the actual uh, debris. <laughs> they took some of the technology and used it for their space program. So to continue on, the object was first detected by radar late Saturday afternoon, about 70 miles north of the U.S. border. So that would be uh, the 11th of February in Canada, said Air Force General Glenn Van Herk, the commander of the North American Aerospace Defense Command and U.S. Northern Command. F-15 fighter jets were scrambled from Portland, but were unable to locate it. Wow, seems far away. It appeared again on radar Sunday near Wisconsin and was tracked across the state into the upper peninsula of Michigan. Sunday afternoon, air, airspace over parts of Dewar County, northern Lake Michigan, northern uh, Michigan, was closed temporarily, temporarily for national defense purposes. So they started closing things over Lake Michigan. According to the North American Aerospace Defense Command, the decision to close the airspace was made in conjunction with the FAA. Okay, makes sense. After the Lake Michigan airspace was reopened, the FAA military closed airspace over Lake Huron to the east. So I have the map here. So basically, this is uh, Lake Michigan here. These are the Great Lakes, right? So basically, they launched people from Portland. It had come all the way across here. Uh, it tracked, I guess, all the way across the US almost, and then comes over here. And then this is Lake Michigan. And then over here, my computer is running slow for some reason, of course, when I'm live. This is uh, Lake Huron. So you'll see. So basically, we shot somewhere over here. They said within 15 nautical miles. Uh, maybe you guys can help me find out from the comm when we uh, listen to it. So the object had been flying at about 20,000 feet over Lake Huron in a path and altitude that raised concerns about it being a hazard to civil aviation, according to Air Force Brigadier General Pat Ryder, the Pentagon press secretary. So 20,000 feet. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of things out there flying around. Officials told the Associated Press that President Biden ordered the object shot down and that it was believed to be the same one tracked over Montana Saturday and monitored by the government beginning the night before. This is, this is interesting. Madison-based U.S. Air Force F-16 fighter jets downed the object on Sunday. So those jets. But the airmen themselves were from the Minnesota National Guard's 148th fighter wing, according to Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. I think it's probably the same. Uh, the location chosen for this spot for the shoot down afforded us the opportunity to avoid impact to people on the ground while improving chances for debris recovery, according to a release from the U.S. Department of Defense. 
the object landed in Lake Huron about 15 nautical miles from shore. And that has to make sense. I mean, it's, it lands in the water. That's got to be so much safer. The military has recalibrated its radar to account for the smaller objects and the heightened awareness also may account for the increased number of sightings. So yeah, they basically, they you can change your clutter de detection so you can make it more sensitive. Van Herc said Sunday night, the last four incidents appear to be the first time in history U.S. warplanes have shot down aircraft over or near the United States. At the first time ever? I mean, what about the balloon shoot-downs by Frank Luke? Uh, or maybe that was in Germany. Okay, U.S. Representative Jack Berman of Michigan, who first confirmed the airstrike, called for more transparency surrounding the situation. Others like it. The American people deserve far more answers than we have. That is a good point. Then uh, you basically have Representative Slotkin from Michigan commended the work, and the object's been downed. Okay, so let's go through. Um, this is your area refueling tracks. So that there's, there's tankers out there that talk about area refueling tracks here um, over Lake Michigan. It sounds like that's where they're actually refueling. So I think your refueling tracks over here, and they're coordinating. You'll hear four aircraft. And they'll be coordinating, I guess, to shoot down um, somewhere the object. And they're flying with the object nearby it. And what's interesting here is they talk about the description and they describe it. So uh, so I flew F-16s for 18 years, and it sounds all very familiar to me. So let's go uh, start it. So right here, this is from uh, the War Zone. Uh, radio audio from F-16 shoot down of object over Lake Huron. Let's make sure you guys can hear it. Can you guys let me know you can hear it in the comm? Sorry. All right. So this is basically from the war zone. And what you'll hear now, this is, uh, so AWACS is Huntress. So you hear Huntress when I talk about that. And then Acer is uh, two F-16s. There's another two ship of F-16s, I think three and four, but I couldn't tell actually the, the first couple of times I listened to it. Um, and you also hear tankers on there. So the tanker pilots, so the air refueling aircraft. All right, great. Thanks, John. Sounds good, everybody. Thanks for being here. Oh yeah, I'm in a, it's Valentine's Day. So I was at uh, at an event, a very nice singing event, Luz Cultura in, uh, in Praia de Luz. And so I uh, had to wear the suit. It, but uh, thanks, thanks everybody for being here. Hope you're having a great, uh, great week. Exciting stuff, tons of information. Okay, so let's get started. One two, Acer one one. Block two zero zero two three zero in the roof. A one. Two one check stand and can I get a new up over for two right one? Yeah, calm at two, just turn down. I'll let you him handle primarily uh, ETC uh, on hundreds, but I do have not. Okay, so basically they're just, a lot of it you'll hear is admin. If you're hearing any numbers, then basically what it'll be, those numbers will be fuel checks probably, like 9.8, that's 9,800 pounds. Um, and they're talking about ATC, so you hear those words, Huntress uh, and Acer 1-1. So let's see if we can hear it. That static is so loud, my kid. I don't know if you're getting all that feedback from them or not. He's like the main pilot there, Acer. He's having a lot of issues. So there's two radios in the F-16. They have three radios now, I'm sure. And so you you have one radio that's turned up higher, and you have one radio that's turned down lower. You split the, the communication so you can tell. And that's what they mentioned, too. They say AUX. So I'll contact Huntress on the AUX is the auxiliary radio. So that's going to be your COM2, your secondary com communication. And again, you know, I'm not going to give away tactics, you know, that I am concerned about you know, Chinese spies, like we're talking about watching, uh, watching this. So, but I am going to try and relate uh, general information. I am not right now. Okay, yeah. Constant static from that radio. One, you have an uh, update on gas man zero one in terms of what altitude he's going to be at. Thanks. I'm at one two four point four. One two four point four. Thanks. To uh, the cap and try to coordinate with the uh, center now for a thirty nine like mile rate. Currently up at point twenty three. And I'll probably yo-yo to the tanker that required. Three nine three fifty four twenty k. I was heading to the uh, northwest. Right now, though, we're in like the beam. It's going to be the hardest spot. I almost kind of want to go to a point and then do like a head-on. Okay, so basically, there he just talked there about how to shoot it. So 
we're kind of entering here towards the end of, uh, I think being, you know, what they've already kind of decided what they're going to do. And what I think they're going to do is wait for this thing to get over water. Right. So it's flying over this way. I don't know what that thing is. So somewhere over Lake Huron, I think uh, I'm guessing just somewhere in this area. Um, and they're just tracking it. So it gets over this area and then they're going to shoot it. Um, or it could be up here. Well, maybe you guys can help me with that. Um, so basically that's what he's talking about. And that is it. Let's see. Formation. Turn left heading three five zero. Work with that. I basically don't want to point, you know, off of our uh, whole point two seven zero uh, twenty to. It sounds like actually eighteen to twenty four would be the request. Basically, take the heading in, and we still on three five zero. Okay, so basically they're trying to organize wh where they're going to hold and how they're going to attack this thing. So w what I think is happening is that it, it's basically flowing this way. He says later on 69 knots. So it's basically 20,000 feet flowing uh, 69 knots. And so they're setting up their, their hold points to run in and be able to attack this thing. And he talked about, he talked about the beam. So basically this is head on. All right, let me see this. You know, this is this is head on and then in the beam. So if you're going to attack something in the beam, may, maybe it's easier uh, to shoot it uh, is what he's talking about. How's it going? Uh, just three times around. Copy. Yeah, the winds are uh, 69 knots. So we'll check uh, MTR 30. That's it. He says the winds are 69 knots. Back again. One is 9.8. 9.8. There's two two ships out there. Okay, so you have one guy talking and he's got his wingman, and then you have another guy talking and he's got his wingman. And I think one of them is coming off the tanker. You call this yo-yo ops, where we trade across uh, tankers. Two zero zero. Yeah. Range one one. Step high one one. I try to put a wheel. He's yeah. talking with a wheel. I think they're just orienting. Oh, I'm gonna call it a balloon. I don't really know what. I couldn't see anything that says hello. I didn't see it outside of my eyes. Stand by. Okay, sorry, I just had to go back there. Okay, so he, he basically set up in a wheel. Sounds like they're set up in a wheel around it. And he's basically going to talk about uh, what, what he, how he's having trouble seeing it. Oh, I'm going to call it a balloon. I don't really know what. I couldn't see anything that says hello. I didn't see it outside of my eyes. Okay, inside of index 20. So he said, basically, I can't even see it outside with my eyes. And the other guy's talking about, uh, you know, locking it up, basically. Oh, or he's locked. Definitely looks like something, uh, there's uh, some kind of object that's suspended in the air. It's hard to tell. It's pretty small. I cannot see it outside of my eyes. Yeah, so basically says there's there's definitely an, an object there. Uh, it looks like it's suspended. It's difficult to see with my eyes. So that makes me, I think he's looking at it with his targeting pod. So the actual targeting pod, you know, is the things you've seen with the gimbal and the go fast. So I think he's looking at it through that exact thing right there, a lightning pod uh, or a sniper pod. And and so, but he can't pick it up with his eyes. So as he tries to see it with his the naked eye, he can't see it. And the problem is, the gun, especially, is really a, a you know a visual weapon. You actually have to see something to shoot it with the gun. Um, yeah, you have to see something basically to shoot it with the gun. And I think that's probably why they went with the missiles. Also, you know, you just because if you can see it with the targeting pod, you can lock it with the uh, IR heat-seeking missile. Then you can just shoot the missile at it. But with the gun, you have to actually take your see it with your eyes and then actually shoot at it. That's how the gun works. Yeah, so he says good tone, that's the missile, right? So the missile is tracking it just fine all the way in. He just said he can't see it with his eyes to actually, I, I, that's why they couldn't identify it. This thing, you just can't see it. It's not traveling that fast. 
the wind's 69 knots. So yeah, 20,000 feet slowest you can go in a Viper is probably like 160 knots. If you're doing like slow flight. With my knife, with the cone. So I've got a good crack, but I can't see it through the, like the glare of the cockpit. Yeah, so basically, it, the missile's tracking it just fine, but he, he can't see it with his eyes. It sounds like number two picked up visually about a thousand feet. Uh, uh, number two saw it visually, so saw it with his eyes at about a thousand feet. Looks like the black hot works a little better as well on the targeting pod. The one one and the targeting pod, you can see something, I can't tell if it's metallic or what, and there's, uh, I can see like lines coming down below, but I can't see anything below it. So they're talking about in the targeting pod. So the, the exact thing you, you see in gimbal um, in Black Hot, it sounds like you said you can see it a little easier in Black Hot. So they're looking, and he says, basically, it's an object with some lines hanging down. Black and all the miles. So there it is, Sal. One, one, looking outside, it's kind of like a, a blackish, I'm going to call it like a container. I can't really tell, though, what the shape is. Visual, at least I Okay, yeah, so he said uh, he's going to call it a container. So that is, especially in the Viper community, we say container because you can't say the word box because box would has sexual connotations. And so you replace any word that has sexual connotations like box. I just said it. I'm sure there's fighter pilots in the, in the uh, crowd. Box, 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 head. And uh, so you have to say container. He said it's, which is a square. It's a square shape. I think it's a visual right around 2,000-ish feet away. I mean, I'm still looking to be on station at uh, 20 or 1730. Copies all, no issues there. We got uh, over an hour uh, before hitting uh, like our tanker joker, so it should be a factor. Yeah, I want to say the whole time these guys sound so cool. I mean, they've obviously, whoever's doing the initial engagement, everything has is a test pilot or he's been to weapon school. They seem very, very cool. Like, I mean, these guys are on just like a training mission, it sounds like, but they're, you know, ex obviously they're going to execute it well, I think. We plan on uh, sitting uh, as soon as they get here and get a top off. Thanks. The uh, CFR now, and uh, we'll be on station. And uh, stand by. We have a lot of gas. 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 So they're, they're, they're working a lot of altitudes, right? So you're going to, what are you worried about mostly in, in flying is always is deconfliction. So they're talking about altitudes. So the blocks, we'll talk about, hey, can you work block two to block three or block 20 to 23? That's 20 to 23,000. So that's the blocks. It's, it's just deconfliction. One, one, should be able to either. Uh, the only thing is just the size of it. Uh, that would be challenging. Yeah, so this is quite interesting. So probably the most interesting, and my lights are kind of going weird here. Uh, anyway, the most interesting he, conversation of the whole thing is, is right here. And what he's talking about, what he explains here is basically how small this thing is, is why they don't shoot a gun at it. You know, I've gotten a lot of questions, a lot of comments seen on the, the spy balloon, you know, the spy balloon up at 64,000 feet. I mean, they could have shot it, but it's quite dangerous, right? And yes, you're, you know, who said uh, you're in a flying weapon? What are you worried about? Was one of the comments. Um, the biggest thing we do is risk mitigation, and so you'll hear him talk through basically why using the gun's not a good idea, and uh, why he thinks uh, it. Yeah, they, they end up using a missile. Yeah. So he said it's going so slow and it's so small you can't see it. You have to get so close. I'm honestly more worried about hitting it before knowing it was there. Almost like a octagon shape. Uh, I'm going to call it a balloon. You can definitely see strings hanging down below, but I don't see anything below it. Yeah, so he says, I'm going to go out and just call it. A, I'm going to call it a balloon. I can see strings hanging down, but I don't don't see anything hanging down underneath it. So he says it's a balloon. I don't know why they say it's unidentified. If this guy's like, it's a balloon, maybe, maybe they disagree. It's pretty small. I don't know, size of like a, a balloon or something. Uh, just to give it a shot, we got, we got plenty of time with the lake. But uh, yeah, it's just a really cool walk to do either. Two-step bird dog. 
Yeah, it's kind of cold today, all right? That's kind of knowing what I'm looking for. I'll be able to pick it up at that a mile, 1.1. Yeah, so he says there, just knowing what I, I need to be looking for, I can pick it up at a mile, which is very fast, right? In a mile, you're going, you know, like I said, the slowest they could possibly go is probably, I'd say they're going 250 knots probably, maybe 200 knots. They'd have to put their gear down, which you could do. Um, but yeah, if you imagine 200 miles an hour, that's, uh, you know, a, a minute, so three miles a minute. You know, 20 seconds. That's all you got to try and pick this thing up, target it, shoot it. Oh, shit, I flew by it. Uh, the most recent hard point. What's that feel? Big three to four. That thing will pop and I'll have to go off. Let's do a run on that thing then. Okay. Any contact, uh, radar contact? I do not have radar contact right now. Okay. So he's yeah. not rid of uh, they're at the, I want you to hear all the conversation with uh, hunters. Can we get from uh, southeast to northwest? Uh, he's firm and then asking about the kind of gun. I honestly think we got one. Uh, and there was one part there. He says uh, it's about the size of a four wheeler or something. It's one one. Hunters got that there one. It's uh, 30 miles north of uh, the point right now, tracking east. So if you're able to stay at uh, sector. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at the leg. It's just between the finger and uh, Wisconsin. Okay, so he says there, in between the finger and Wisconsin. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Um, in between the finger and Wisconsin. Yeah, they they're they're referencing um, fingers of water. Or land. So when we're flying, we'll always use references, okay? But these are pretty big. This is 30 kilometers here, you know? So, you know, I don't know what kind of fingers they're using, but usually you'll use fingers maybe like this, you know? You're going you're gonna to say ground references so everyone can talk about it quickly. But I don't really know where they are uh, exactly. Hey, so southwest and northeast, the like north. So southwest of North East we're in attack. Uh, uh, got about another, I guess, three minutes before it's going to be basically on the western edge of the lake. Did, uh, we basically 30 lakh like miles around uh, where you are right now. And uh, we're up at 370.9. So that's right here. <laughs> so, uh, we have a north south driving more right over top of the uh, visible uh, left hand turn. Yeah, the left hand turn. I'm uh, 30 miles to the north of the Copy, yeah, we're quickly over the, the sliver of land and we're right now at the middle of the lake. Yep, yeah. Yeah, we cold. Yeah, we're just safe. Yeah, we're safe. Yeah, we're safe. Yeah, so they're over a sl sliver of land and, you know, I think if they're attacking. Southwest and northeast, they're probably going to be lining up in here. That's what I, you know, so the shoot down probably happened somewhere around here. And, you know, they don't sound that stressed, to be honest. Maybe it's just a little bit. now just to see the orientation. See if you can see anything that would be a factor along on the target or anything. Basically in line with the lake. Yeah, they're worried about, you know, if you're going to shoot a missile, what's going to happen is where it's going to go after. You know, they want to do this cleanly, obviously. So he's asking them to check. Do you see any ships or boats or anything out there that could be a factor? just some kind of dark object. You can see some strings or something hanging down below it. Oh, sorry. I can't tell if it's holding anything. Yeah, he says just some sort of dark object. I think he did say octagonal earlier. Uh, there's some strings hanging down. He can't tell if it's holding anything. And then he says with the targeting pod here that uh, it's not holding anything. Based on the fact that uh, it looks dark, but I can get a pretty good uh, sun glint off of it. Now, this one forgot that. So the last run, you're basically like right over top of where the TOI is and all. Stop it. for one to state of contact. I can hear him on this brief, but it sounds like he can't hear you. From one two, uh, nothing different on the last pass from number two. The tanker got that 8.0 door code. Whoa. 
Okay, yeah, you hear in there door closed. They're talking about the air refueling door because the air refueling door, and it's happened a lot, <laughs> it's happened to F-16s, it depressurizes the, the tanks. So if you forget to close that door, then you can you know, lose all of that gas. They've had uh, crashes before uh, because of that. So you hear that air refueling door closed. Welcome, everybody. Uh, basically, we just have a, another five minutes here of this live stream. Please smash that like button. Um, but then we'll be going to uh, Martin Willis. I'll be going to Martin Willis live shows after this. This is the audio playback of uh, the Lake Huron object shoot down. And uh, Huntress East One One's uh, back on station. Uh, so good last. Yeah. So Huntress is the AWACS, and Acer One One's back on station. Say last, and it's going to end here in a minute. But they're just setting up to shoot their missile attack. So they're setting up to shoot their missile attack aiming uh, this way to the northeast, what I suspect, based on uh, the comm. Long, make clear by there's nothing out there. Um, nothing east of the OTR. Yeah, make sure there's nothing uh, out there, nothing east of the target. Please one one, Scott. Is there grainy Just got that, one. Flag for, for to offload is 85K for uh, six hours of the 20K mm -hmm. offload to the Get a weather check here just at, at the very end. Two, step up. You're at uh, 80 miles out. You can give a call for operators. What you have to pass it. First, what do you pray to? Hotel, winds are 2503, 10 miles away, sky clear, 2982. So, base ATIS, that's uh, you can call to the base and get the weather. It's 80 miles away, and they said it was sky clear. Um, so it, it and it sounds clear out there. You know, I can I don't hear a lot of stress in the pilots' voices. So I bet the weather is just crystal clear. Obviously, they're talking about seeing this thing visually, but they're not worried about it. So I think the weather's great. He, they said the winds was sixty nine knots and it's moving right. So this whole thing is moving. The on on the east coast, those encounters. The most interesting part for me is that they're not moving. So they're stationary in high winds. If you look in a lot of those range fowler reports, they're stationary in high winds. So this one, it's going with the wind. I mean, the guy basically says it's a balloon. Um, you know, he calls it on the radio. You know, it seems like it's some type of balloon. You know, I mean, that, that's what it sounds like. At least there's nothing there to say that it's, it, it's not, obviously, um, that it's not a balloon. So that's what I have to say for that. But it's still very interesting. I'm still very curious what it is. There's 750 feet. I guess that's how deep Lake Huron is. Hopefully, it's you know they'll be able to recover it. It's a bummer they keep shooting these things down in the water, but maybe they'll get back from Dead Horse. So near Dead Horse, they shot down uh, the F-22s. I have a project here. Didn't do it. So the F-22s shot down right over here in Prudhoe Bay. Wherever it is, oh here. So this is this is sea ice. We should get back the uh, equipment from that. And that one sounded quite interesting. That's uh, also here. You know what are the Canadians going to find, right in the middle of the Yukon? So they sent the Canadians out there. They should know where that crash site is. So this one, I'm really curious about. Um, this one was the cylinder, right? So they shot down a cylinder. I don't, what's that about? And then this one, I think, uh, we, I don't know if we've gotten any actually description of it. This is the one I'm, I haven't gotten any description. So all interesting stuff. And now I just, uh, saw this. So basically this final point here is that as the mystery objects get shot down, us sets up a new task force on UFOs. 
Wall Street Journal. I can't read it, but they say uh, basically it made a baffling series of incidents in which the U.S. has shot down three unidentified flying objects. The White House said Monday it would create a team expected to study airborne objects and the potential security and safety risks they pose. So <laughs> interesting stuff. Um, yeah, love it. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the content. Please check out Martin Willis. Thanks for being here, everybody. Smash that like button. And then if you're watching this later, leave comments. So I try and read all the comments and let me know what you guys think about this stuff. Great. See you at Martin Willis. Martin Willis live shows going right there. I'll be in the same same spot. Thanks for being here, buddy. Everybody. Peace.